from Super League to Olympic distance to age group world records to Kona. Go longer with the right fuel at the right time with S Fuels. Welcome to our 11th year of Breakfast with Bob from beautiful Huggles on the Rocks. My name is Bob Babbitt. We're brought to you by Master Spas. As fuels go longer, Hoka Let's Fly, Form Smart Swim Goggles, Quintana Roo, Zoot, the original triathlon brand, and of course, our Challenged Athletes Foundation. Our next guest is the first person with Down syndrome to finish an Ironman when he finished Ironman Florida. Give it up for Chris Nikich. <laughs> and his dad, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Chris finishing Ironman in Florida how special was that for you you know um, you know um, becoming the person that felt uh, that I could finish the race is only uh, three things that I've still overcome yes was one I had to um, overcome the anxiety, and then yes. two is the bike class, Tough. and three, I had to uh, get back on the bike and ride the last 32 miles. You were to amazing. To ever to spare the cut of time, and when I realized that I had to. Right fast, the an average person, then I'll make it to a off, which I did. Yes, you and did. When yeah. It, and uh, when it comes with uh, the marathon of 26.2, I have pain all over, like my body, my, uh, my back, yeah. the legs, the blisters, and everything. And until my 10, I thought I was going to quit. But then Team Nickets decided to call him Nick. And when they came out, he had a near uh, heat argument yes. with Dan. <laughs> and Dan said, um, then said that, like, uh, keep it tough on. And Nick was like, no, take the tough off. <laughs> and when Nick took the tough off, uh, that was when I uh, kept running again. That's great. When the tough went off, and when we got near, to uh, the finish, uh, Dan had to turn it back on, and then he told me that uh, go in and have your moment. I love it. Go and have your moment. So yeah, a round of applause for that that special moment. And you know, Nick, with a, a child with Down syndrome, n knowing that there's a lot of a lot of thought that okay. These are the limits that your child, this is what, sort of, this is the box that your child's going to live in. You never thought that for a second. You realize that while Chris is different, he learns differently. Not lesser than, but differently. And I love your, your motto, you know, 1% better a day. Talk a little about how you redefined what this young man could do. Sure. So um, we actually hoped he would be able to do more but we were convinced by society that he couldn't right and that thought only changed when he was 18 when i finally said this this has got to stop we got to see how far we can help him and the one percent motto 
is really designed, it's almost like walking on a ledge blindfolded. Um, there's so many risks when he has all the disabilities he has that 1% is a way to kind of move slowly without taking big risks, right. but keep moving forward. And so we designed this in for the long term to say, if he got 1% better every day for a year or two or three, where, how far could he go? We didn't know because there was no formula, No. but that's the journey we set on. And we found out that he was able to go from 40 pounds overweight, sitting on the couch in two and a half years to completing an Ironman. What's fascinating to me is uh, you, you explained it to me at one point that Chris just learns differently. Yep. So in terms of riding a bike, uh, a, a kid might take a couple of weeks to learn how to balance. It might take Chris a couple months. But when he gets to the point where he can balance his upside, next day he's riding 20 miles, then 30 miles and 40 miles. So it's different, it's, it's different. not lesser than. It's different because you know when you think about how we learn, we learn because we receive information on our conscious mind. Right. We process it and it goes to our subconscious mind. And most of us operate on the subconscious level. The difference is all of us have a very powerful conscious mind. He doesn't. So what we have to do is come up with a learning style and a teaching style to help get through his conscious level into his subconscious to where he can perform at about the same level as most people. Yes. The trick is getting through to the subconscious mind. And so we designed a whole training and learning program. And Dan, his guide, helps with this all the time, which is we talk out loud what he should be thinking, but he doesn't to help it get through his subconscious uh, to his subconscious. So all of our training, everything we do, is designed to help overcome the obstacle he has, which is the way he processes information, so we can get it into his subconscious, so he can then operate on a whole different level. And when you, when you think about it, uh, he's, the balance is an issue. Riding a bike, balance is an issue. And what you've dealt with, and a lot of times in triathlon we think aerodynamics. Aerodynamics means nothing. For, for Chris, no. it's about being stable, it's about being comfortable, it's about eliminating the pain in the butt and the neck, yep. and that's what you, rather than follow the formula for other folks, you had to create a new formula. Yeah. Talk a little bit about how you adapted the bike, for, because wind is a big issue mm -hmm. on this course. How have you built the bike that Chris will be using so that he'll be not just comfortable, but safe on that bike? Yeah, so just to get a perspective, Chris was 16 years old when he learned how to ride a bike, and it took six months of everyday practice until he could actually balance and ride the bike 100 yards by himself. Okay. That's a long time. So you say, well, that's how difficult the balancing issue is. So how do you then solve that to ride 112 miles and do the winds and everything else? So we just looked at all the issues and said, let's design something that's stable. So we started with a, a Ventum um, gravel bike, bigger wheels, wide handlebars, st stability in the way he handles himself. We put aero bars backwards instead of forwards. So he could still have that stability and, and strength, but be able to get pressure off his hands and his, uh, his butt. Because right. after Ironman Florida, he didn't want to buy, ride bikes anymore because the pain was so bad in his hands and butt. He just didn't want to do it anymore. Sure. I can't so we had to find a way to get rid of that pain. And by designing a different setup, we were able to alleviate that pain. And a little 1% at a time, we went from a straight up to down. And literally, we would just reduce it a quarter of an inch, a quarter of an inch, until he got it. And now he rides in almost an arrow position, much wider but really, really stable because it is about managing the... So he hasn't fallen in two years. Since That's you've the changed the Since bike. Since we changed the bike. That is so cool. The other thing is you were talking about the perception with, uh, you know, in terms of Down syndrome community. The perception is you're not going to ride a bike. No. You're not going to do triathlon. You had to change that perception with the, the higher ups, the people in the world of Down syndrome to have different expectations. How tough of a battle has that been? It's, it's been the most difficult battle because everybody has learned to accept the, the standard, the, the sta status quo. Right. This is what we should expect for our kids. And when you challenge the status quo, you don't become a friend of the community. You actually become someone who everybody kind of, they either have to accept that they're not doing enough for their kids, right, which is yeah. a hard thing to do, or they got to they gotta say or do something to you. And everybody's called me and us crazy for doing this. But now it's changing because in Florida, three of Chris's friends are all doing triathlons with Down syndrome. That is the coolest thing. And that's what it's about. When you think about what Ironman has done over the years, we had the first guy with diabetes who did Ironman, the first guy who had uh, AIDS, and then wheelchair athletes. We're changing perceptions here at the Ironman. There's a reason it's called Anything is Possible. Yep. How did your guy's world change well, when you finished Ironman Florida? Tell them how your well, world changed. Well, uh, 
one of the things that I have changed dramatically was because um, I Man was one of the toughest races. Yes, it is. I knew that I knew a guy who would get me there and go to Phoenix, and that guy is sitting right there. There's Dan. Um, it's Dan. Here's our guide right here, Dan, who's been amazing through this entire journey. Now tell him about the dreams you've gotten since Iron Man. That's and what he wants uh, to know. Tell him about your dreams. What are then, your dreams? And then uh, it had led me to get my dreams. What is that? Uh, the first one was to uh, have a vehicle. Vehicle, uh, a car. The second one is I got a place to stay at. So he got a, a house. A house on your own. He got, bought his own house. And his own car. His own car. And, and then what else you got? And going far, because Nick has his dresses off because now I'm a girlfriend. Girlfriend? You want a girlfriend? And you got one. Yeah. You got a girlfriend? And I got her. Yeah. <laughs> Good man. I love it. She's coming in three days. So this course, he's been out on this course, and you guys got here early to ride from oh, Kauai High to yeah. Javi and back, the yeah. windiest part, yeah. the crosswinds. How's he done? So uh, we've been here for six days and we've been working out every day. The first three times he did Javi, he was fine. He went from seven miles an hour the first time to 12 the second to 15 or 16 the third. And then yesterday the winds came out and he went back down to seven and he got knocked over about 10 times. And uh, it was scary, it was hard, emotionally difficult, exhausted. We're going back today to tackle it again. We're going back tomorrow, we're going back the next day. When those winds hit, he will be ready. I love it. So, what will it mean to you to finish Ironman World Championship? Well, uh, <laughs> it means a lot because uh, it means a lot because uh, on October six, yep. is my birthday. What? October six is your birthday? Yeah. And um, that's a good birthday present. And uh, also. Uh, for my also birthday gift from Nick is I'm going to have a promise ring. Promise ring? And then for this line. For who? Adrian. Adrian? For your girlfriend? <laughs> yeah. All right. How about a round of applause <laughs> for Chris and Nick Nickich, Poncho Man. Take us out. A birthday. I like it. That is a wrap for day one of Breakfast with Bob from beautiful Huggles and the Rocks. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Another round of applause for Chris Nickich. You guys are awesome. Yeah.